Hi, in this particular playlist we're going to be looking at paper two from the June 2017 exam. Now this is actually the calculator version of the paper and it's Edexcel higher tier. Um, as with uh, a lot of these playlists, I'm going to aim for about 25-30 minutes or so, give you the opportunity to work through each of the questions and then compare your solutions. So we're going to move on then with question number one that deals with probability. And it says the table shows probabilities that a biased dice will land on a two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and then yeah, this guy rolls the biased dice 200 times, work out an estimate for the total number of times the dice will land on a one or a three. Well, we're okay with the three. We've got to work out the one. So in order for us to do that, the total probability that it will land on one of the sides or that in it will it, it's a certainty it'll land on one of the sides is going to be one. So what we've got to do is add all of these up and then take it away from 1. Now if we do that, if I add all of those up, I'm going to get 0 0.69. So what's left for that is going to be that the probability of landing on 1 is 0 0.31. OK, so therefore, the probability of it landing on 1 is going to be 0 0.31 times 200, and that's landing on side 1, and that's going to be a total of 62 times. And then the probability of it landing on um, the number 3 is going to be 0 0.18 times 200. And if I work that out, that's going to be 36 times. So in other words, what we're saying is the total amount of times it will land if he rolls the dice 200 times as an estimate will be these two added together. So that's going to be 98 times that it's going to land on either a 1 or a 3 will be 98 times. OK, hope that's OK for you. Let's move on then to question number two, which deals with um, ratios. And this is a fairly traditional type of question that you tend to come across in these sorts of exams. Um, some adults and some children are in a theatre. The ratio of number of adults and number of children is 5 to 2. So let's just have a look at that for a second or two. They've given us a fair bit of information right at the very beginning. And what it says is that um, 117 children had seats in the circle. OK, well, if 117 uh, children had seats in the circle, that represents a quarter of the children in the theatre because three quarters of the children had seats in the stalls. So what we're actually saying is that one quarter equals 117. Well, if that is the case, then we can work that out that therefore four quarters is going to equal 468. OK, so what we've done now is worked out the number of children that are actually in the theatre. And what was said, uh, what is also said is the ratio of the number of adults, the number of children is five to two. So actually, this um, 468 children represents those two shares. So let's just look at how we would write that out. Well, we've got adults to children and we're told it's five to two. OK, so if there were seven, seven people altogether in the theatre, two of them would be children and five of them would be adults. OK, however, there aren't two children. We've just worked out there's actually 468. In other words, it's going to be 234 times bigger the amount of children that are actually in the theatre. So if it's 430, uh, 234 times bigger, then it also follows it's going to be 234 times bigger the amount of adults in the theatre. OK, so that's going to be 1170 adults. So we're still maintaining the same ratio. But what we're saying is, is that actually, rather than there being just seven people in the audience, there's actually that many adults, that many children, which means the total attendance is 1638 in total. OK, now we're asked to work out whether that represents more than 60 percent 
of the audience, okay, or 60% of the seats in the theatre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at whether that is a 60% percentage or not. So what we're saying is, is 1,638 out of 2,600 times 100, is this amount greater or less than 60%? Well, actually, if you pop that into a counter, into a calculator, that's going to give you 63%. So on this Saturday, there were more than 60% of the seats filled. It was actually going to be 63% of the seats filled. OK, so let's move on then to question number three. And question number three deals with a, a 3D diagram. OK, now what was shown here is um, the, the front, uh, the side of um, the cross section of a trapezium prism, trapezoidal prism. OK, and what we're going to be asked to do is to draw the front and the side elevations of the prism. OK, so if we want to do that, then really we need to just look at this side here. Now imagine, if you like, that you're a tiny little ant, okay? So you're a tiny little ant, okay? Or a tiny little spider, and you're looking at that massive great building. So what you're actually going to see in front of you is going to be basically a trapezoid, or a trapezium. So it's going to look like this, where if each of these... Um, uh, two centimetres is one metre. Well, if I've got to draw two centimetres, I'm going to draw that as four down there. OK, like that. And then again, I've got two centimetres, two metres along here. So it's actually going to be four centimetres on my uh, grid here. So that's going to come along like that. And then I've got half a centimetre up. OK, so that's going to come up just one of those. And then I'm going to join that to that. And what I end up with is that, which is actually my front elevation. OK, so let's look then at the side elevation. Well, the side elevation, I've got um, basically imagine that um, I'm now looking at it from this side, or if you like, this side of the building. So again, I'm at just a tiny little... Ant looking at this, okay. Um, if you want to draw tiny little ants all over your maths paper, that's perfectly fine. But just imagine how that's going to look. Well, it's going to look to me like I've got this um, shape like that, which is going to be the bottom shape here, or if you like this, where this is one meter across. So if it's one meter across, it's actually going to be two centimeters on my particular grid. And then it's going to have a height. Now, bearing in mind, it's going to come up to a height of two metres. So actually, in total, it comes up four of these centimetres. So it looks like that. So from the front of the building, or rather the side of the building, this is how it would look to me. OK, I hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number four and question number four crops up in pretty much every paper I've done so far it's good old speed distance and time so it's going to come up and I think it makes sense for you to practice speed distance and time questions okay so Ollie drove uh, 56 kilometers from Liverpool to Manchester he drove 61 kilometers from Manchester to Sheffield his average speed was this it took 75 minutes. OK, so let's just have a look, first of all, at Liverpool to Manchester. And by now, I think you're aware that I tend to use a lot of these little square brackets just to focus on the bits that are important. OK, so let's just look at Liverpool to Manchester. OK, so if he's doing that, then the formula I'm going to write in is speed equals distance over time okay and i'm going to do this quite a lot in this particular question because it's important that you keep writing these formulas down and it will really help you to remember so we're told that his average speed from liverpool to manchester was 70 kilometers per hour and he drove a distance of 56 kilometers per hour so if that was the case we would have a speed of 70 a distance is going to be 56 and the time is going to be here 
Now we need to be able to move things around a little bit, but what we end up with is saying that time equals 56 over 70. Now, if you use uh, just reducing fractions, that will actually reduce down to four fifths of an hour. So if I divide the top and bottom, then I'm able to reduce that down. Now, four fifths of an hour, if you do uh, four fifths times 60 minutes, that's going to give you the amount of minutes which is actually going to be equal to 48 minutes. So in other words, he took 48 minutes to drive from Liverpool to Manchester. OK, so let's have a look now at um, Manchester to Sheffield. So what happened in Manchester to Sheffield? OK, so Manchester to Sheffield. OK, so what he's going to do now is he's actually going to um, he's got a speed. OK, and that's equal to distance divided by time. OK. And what we've got there is a distance of 61, which we're told, and a time it takes him one and a quarter hours. It's 75 minutes, right at the very top is 75 minutes, is one and a quarter hours, okay? So we've got 61 divided by one and a quarter, or one point. I'm going to write it as one and a quarter, but you could write it as 1.25 is perfectly fine. So we know that Manchester to Sheffield, he's going to take that at 48.8 kilometres per hour. OK, now that piece of these pieces of information might be useful to you. But what I've done is I've just taken the bits of information from the actual question and then I'm going to apply all the bits of information I've got in order to work out all his average speed for his total drive from Liverpool to Sheffield. OK, so let's have a look at that. So we've got Liverpool to Sheffield. And this is the important one for me, okay? And again, I'm gonna write speed equals distance over time, okay? So let's have a look at the information that we've got. Well, we know the distance is the total of the uh, 56 plus 61. So we can add those two together and that's gonna give us 170. OK, and the time it's taken him, well, that's going to be 123 minutes. It's actually going to be the 75 minutes here and the 48 minutes here. If you add those two together, you're going to get 123 minutes. But remember, we need this as an hour. OK, because we're actually going to be measuring this as kilometres, which we've got, and it's kilometres per hour. So therefore, if we're going to make an hour, what we've got to say is it's 123 minutes out of 60. OK, now if we use our calculator to be able to calculate that, then that's going to give us then the hourly rate, OK, which will work out for you as 57 point. 07 kilometers per hour and that's actually the answer to this particular question okay i hope that's all right for you as it worked out looking at it now we didn't actually need this bit of information down there but it just gives you a little bit of confidence when you're working through these sorts of questions to cover all the bases. OK, so Janie drove from Barnsley to York, which is my neck of the woods. So I know that area very well. So Janie's average speed from Barnsley to Leeds was 80 kilometres per hour. Her average speed from Leeds to York was 60. Janie says the average speed from Barnsley to York can be found by working out the mean, the average of 80 and 60. OK, if Janie is correct, what does this tell you about the two parts of Janie's journey? Well, um, it tells me actually that if that is correct, then the, um, the time must be the same. OK, now, if you want to just use your calculator, work through a few scenarios there, that will help you with that sort of question. It's uh, it's just one mark, but it is kind of worthwhile just making sure that you're happy with that answer. OK, let's have a look then at uh, question number five. And question number five deals with similar triangles. So similar triangles. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, they do come up from time to time, but really with these sorts of things, it's just dealing with effectively a ratio. So what we've been asked to do is to work out the length AE, which is this length from here to here, okay? But we are told that um, E to C, so that's overall, is going to be 8.1. And we're also told that D to C is going to be 5.4 which is this length along here. And then we're also told that um, D to B is 2.6. So that's actually going to be this one over here. Okay, and we're expected to use that information to be able to work out the length of A to E. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. The two things, or the, the things that we do know in order for us to be able to work this out is that we know that we've got a relationship between this 8.1 side and this 5.4 side. So what we're actually saying is how much bigger is 8.1 than 5.4? Okay, now if we plug that into a calculator or write this out as 8.1 divided by 5.4, it's how many lots of 5.4 are there in 8.1 and actually it works out very very neatly as 3 over 2 or 1.5 okay so it's very very nice it's a nice ratio in other words what we're saying is the bigger triangle is one and a half times bigger than the smaller triangle in terms of the linear length okay so that means then if we want to work out AE okay AE is going to be one and a half times, 1.5 times the length of BD, which is 2.6. So if we plug that in, that's going to give us 3.9. So in this particular calculation, the length of AE is going to be 3.9 centimetres. OK, and then it says um, AC is 6.15, work out the length of AB. OK, well, it's the same thing, really. What we can do is that if we're looking at um, AC being 6.15, if I go all the way up to the top here, that's going to be 6.15 along this whole length. And we've been asked to work out AB, which is this small bit here. So in order, for us, in order for us to do that, we need to work out BC first, because if we work out BC, we just take that away from 6.15, and that will give us then the bit that's left. Okay, so uh, like we did before, we're just going to use that one and a half ratio. So we're going to say that BC equals 6.15 divided by 1.5, and that's going to mean that BC is 4.1. OK, so if I then work out AB itself, it's going to be the overall length, which is 6.15 minus the length 4.1. I'm going to put 4.10 just to help me with my calculation. And that's going to give me 2.05. So with this answer or this particular question, the length of AB is 2.05. OK, um, I'm conscious of the time here, so I think what we'll do is we will um, stop at this particular point. I think also my battery is not so good at the moment, so I think we'll stop at the end of this question five. That's 18 minutes into the video. Um, I'll then uh, record when I've charged my battery. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. Subscribe to the channel. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.